<coughs> I think I might need a doctor myself. CNN is concerned that there are too many white doctors and that that's harming black people's health. Right now, fewer than 6% of doctors in the U.S. identify as black or African-American. That's despite the fact that the community makes up 12% of the country's total population. 12 now? I always thought it was 13. It used to be 13. But because of those 20 million illegal aliens from Mexico and South America, it looks like the black population has been bumped down a percent. Well, that and all the abortions. And that's raising concerns about the impact on public health. CNN Health reporter Jacqueline Howard joins us now. So Jacqueline, what is being done to rectify this? <laughs> rectify it? It's just a huge problem. Too many white doctors. That's the thing, Bianca. More needs to be done to make sure that our physician workforce here in the U.S. reflects the diversity seen among patients. Now, what has been done so far? We've seen more efforts to get STEM programs in grade schools. At the medical school level, we've seen more mentorship programs, particularly for students of color. But when you look at the physician workforce right now, active doctors at this moment, we're still seeing 5.7 percent are black or African American. And that's compared with, as Victor said, 12 percent of the the U.S. population. When you look at Native Americans, less than 1% of doctors are Native American, and that's compared with up to 2% of patients. When you look at Hispanic or Latino physicians, Latino. experts say we need to do more to make sure our doctor workforce reflects the diversity seen among patients. Yeah, we need to do more because the research shows, and we've discussed this before, the mm -hmm. benefits of a more diverse workforce uh, often benefits of hiring people who aren't qualified for the job but just giving them the job anyway solely because <laughs> you want more diversity i would call that a health hazard not a benefit sometimes uh doctors will dismiss the concerns yeah. or symptoms mm -hmm. of a certain demographic uh, explain uh, what the sh studies show <laughs> yes please explain this nonsense to us Exactly, Victor. And research shows that when we have a more diverse physician workforce, there's... Because diversity is a code word for less white people, obviously. More understanding and more trust between the patient and the doctor. So the black patients don't trust the white doctor. So I think what they're saying here is that there's a lot of anti-whiteism still in black communities that needs to be eradicated. If the doctor has an understanding of the patient's cultural experiences, cultural background, lived experiences, especially when it comes to racism or discrimination or other aspects of their life. Then that will help them diagnose a sore throat or an earache more accurately. <laughs> that can help with that physician-patient uh, relationship. And we also see that patients are more likely to follow a physician's medical advice if they do have a feeling of being heard and understood. So all this plays a role in really improving public health, Victor. And, and of course, well, they're saying that black and Latino patients would prefer to have a black or Latino doctor. If a white person were to simply say that they would prefer to have a white doctor, of course, they would be deemed an evil racist. In other news, there are also apparently too many white airline pilots. In the airline industry, less than 6% of all pilots and flight engineers in the U.S. are women, and only about 10% are black, Asian, Hispanic, or Latino. Well, United Airlines, they want to change that. Those numbers, uh, they want to, of course, increase them. CBS 46's Karen Greer explains how they're going to do it. Well, they're going to hire people who aren't qualified for positions, just like they do at colleges and other affirmative action programs. Two decades ago, near runways like these, a Texas girl was discovering her love of aviation. My grandmother would take my sisters and I to the airport to watch the airplanes take off and land. A six-year-old Tatiana Smith was hooked. We could actually smell that jet fuel for a couple of days, and I still love that smell today. You know, if there's one thing you don't want your pilot to be doing, it's huffing airline fumes. So you've been addicted to jet fuel <laughs> since you were a kid. Yes, sir. In an exclusive interview with CBS News, United CEO Scott Kirby is announcing a new effort to bring balance to the flight deck. To bring a uh, lack of safety to the flight deck. We're excited at United to be announcing the United Aviate Academy to address the structural issues with the makeup of our pilots. The Academy aims to enroll 5,000 new pilots by decades in with a benchmark that at least half will be women or minorities. Also, numerous schools across the country are upset that not enough white students 
are getting into trouble. And when they look at the demographics of those being disciplined and suspended, the majority of them are, um, well, they're, they're black. <laughs> and so this superintendent says, when we saw the disproportion of suspensions between our students, we knew that that had to be addressed. <laughs> we have to do right by these kids. <laughs> In place of the old practices, many now are implementing programs and policies that are more restorative, trauma-informed, and aimed at less heavy-handed punishments, especially for subjective infractions such as disorderly conduct or insubordination. Oh, that's just subjective if some kid is just completely disrupting the class and being insubordinate. It's just the teacher's opinion, the teacher's being racist, and just being harder on the black students. Under some of these approaches, educators are given more culturally responsive training, more classroom management skills to manage misbehavior, and will limit the use of suspensions, especially for younger students. Uh, younger black students, of course. Of course, if students aren't being disciplined at home or at school, then they're going to obviously be more likely to get into trouble outside of school and go to jail. February is Black History Month, or really Black Grievance Month, when many of them just complain about white people. And so a Florida middle school teacher has been suspended after posting a series of TikTok videos involving his students, particularly this one where he had the white students acting as the servants of the black students. POV, a Florida classroom. She takes off her coat. They get their seats for them. The white students are feeding them, fanning them, and bowing down and worshiping them. This systemic anti-whiteism is causing instances like this at an Ohio elementary school. A Springfield police incident report we got a hold of shows school staff told police they waited until Monday to report the incident to officers because they were still interviewing students involved. The report says it happened on the playground during recess when a group of black students had gathered several white students to a specific spot on the playground and forced them to say Black Lives Matter against their will, with some kids recording this. Police wrote the principal here told officers a few students who tried avoiding the situation were chased down and either escorted, dragged, or carried to the spot on the playground. Officers said one student was punched in the head. There are no formal charges right now, but the incident report lists an investigation into offenses of possible assault and menacing. Of course, this story was relegated, contained to the local news. But if the shoe is on the other foot, if a group of white students were harassing a group of black students because they were black, it would literally be the top story on the national news. CNN would hold a town hall event. There would be Black Lives Matter marches throughout the entire city. Well, actually, I mean, they would be looting and burning it down. But I mean, you get my point. If you are a BIPOC, a black indigenous or person of color, and you want to take a stand against the systemic anti-whiteism in America, then order my new I Love White People shirt from my online store at markdice.com or click the link in the description below. This is one of those shirts that you should wear at your own risk and just be aware that it could be hazardous to your health. So just be careful where you wear it. But if you want to get one before it gets banned, go on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.